How's it going Orange Cat Brewery? Today on this video we're going to be talking about the names of all these beers in front of me and the story behind them and uh, why we went with the names that we did. This is going to be a really exciting video just going through and just kind of having fun with it. So we're going to go ahead and have a couple beers and talk about um, the story behind these names. <laughs> So before we get into the stories, I just want to say that these beers are in order from my very first batch to my or my recent most finished batch. We do have two more beers on the way. They're in the fermenter. Those are secret beers I can't talk about yet. Orange Cat Brewery uh, confidential information there. So to start off, we have the Dangles Honey Ale. This was my very first batch of beer. Um, it's a brown honey ale. A very good flavor, very uh, strong in the wheats. So as my very first beer, there was a couple mistakes I made with it, but it turned out to taste pretty good actually. So I was very happy with my very, very first batch. If I did it again, there's a lot of things I would do different uh, to bring out more of that sweet honey flavor. The way I decided to name that was uh, Dangle. Um, I first got that nickname, uh, man, back in like middle school, my old middle school football coach. Um, used to call me Dangle, my last name is Langle. I don't know how he, why he did that, but um, <laughs> that was the very first time I got that nickname. And then years later in college, uh, while making music with my friends, uh, I went with the name Dangle. That's a whole nother story, but basically, Dangle's Honey Ale just seemed to fit very well for my first beer. And then next we got, uh, these two were brewed on the same day with uh, two really close friends of mine, AKA Brewmaster uh, Miles Scott and Brewmaster Drew Peacock. The Great Scott, that is a Belgian golden ale. The reason uh, Miles came up with that name was his last name being Scott and making this a great beer. Great Scott was born. The design wanted something Midwest vibe for his Midwest friends. So cornfields, the name right in the middle, um, perfect logo, one of my favorites. And then um, a little bit more about the Peacock Classic, that is a Dunkelweizen or Dukeneisen um, in German, which means dark beer. We wanted this one being a, just a unique beer. We wanted to name it something related to Drew and his nickname being Peacock. He has a whole story about that. You gotta ask him. His information's right here if you're curious. And the reason we decided to go with that logo on that design was because we wanted something colorful. Having Peacock in the name, we wanted it to be colorful. We wanted it to stick out. Um, so those colors collided very well. The design was amazing put together. And th thus born was the Peacock Classic, a classic Dukenheisen German beer. And so next we have the Bulgur's Fat Ale. This was an Oktoberfest beer. So the way I decided to come up with that name is I'm a huge Lord of the Rings fan. And there is a hobbit in Lord of the Rings called Bulger. He's kind of an unsung hero um, in the Hobbit books. Uh, you won't even see him on camera in the movies. He was known for his merrymaking and joy making. So he was a very fun, festive hobbit that actually really helped uh, Sam and Frodo escape the Shire and stayed back and distracted the ring race, uh, put him off course, all that fun stuff. Oh, Sam. <laughs> And so this beer was dedicated to Bulger the Fat Hobbit, uh, Bulger's Fat Ale. The logo was pretty simple. I used a mug from The Hobbit, put it on uh, the design, and then just added some great festive uh, coloring and whatnot to make it an even better looking beer. Up next, we got the Pumpkin Harvest Ale. This was a pretty straightforward design, a really fun recipe, very unique. Uh, my first actual custom recipe that I designed um, and I used homemade or homegrown pumpkins from my Aunt Julia, and she's from uh, Granville, Iowa. So incorporating the zip code 51022 into the logo was a fun uh, kind of thing just to put in the background. And then of course, having the pumpkin in the middle and some descriptions on the side, just showing uh, a little bit more about the beer and the flavor complexity of it. And then again, the holiday delight, a uh, little play on words, just holiday delight. Um, it being a light beer, just goes hand in hand. A really good name that uh, Drew and I came up with and we thought this was gonna be a fun beer to share with uh, friends and family at the holiday times. So, so with it being the holiday times, what better design to go with than Christmas trees, glowing red uh, lettering, glowing green lettering, all that fused into this label makes it just stick out perfect for the Christmas time. Uh, I think anybody that unwraps this 
holiday delight beer uh, under the Christmas tree is gonna be one happy camper. So cheers to all these Orange Cap beers here. Not only does a lot go into making these beers, a lot goes into the story and the name of the beer itself. Half the fun of making these beers is creating that logo and creating that design that makes it stick out and it just adds to the refreshing taste of a good style beer. So I hope you enjoyed all the backstories of Orange Cat Brewery and all of our current beers that we have. If you're interested in learning more, you can visit our website at www.nicklangle.com slash Orange Cat Brewery. There you can find more information about all these beers, the um, behind the scenes making of it. You can see information of ABV levels, IBU levels, um, and then of course the SWOT analysis of all the beers where we go and break down the strengths of the beers, the aromas of the beers, the taste of the beers, all that fun stuff. So again, that's www.nicklangle.com slash Orange Cat Brewery. So until next time, we'll see you on the next video with more how to brew tips, beer tasting videos, and generally everything beer. Cheers.